So in the previous video, we were talking about the important steps required to genetically modify an organism. For example, we wanted to produce genetically modified bacteria. And there were four important steps required to modify the bacteria where we have to extract the gene from the source, in this case the human, produce many copies of the gene, put the gene into vectors, and then identify the bacteria that have been genetically modified. And one of the first important questions that we have to ask is, how are the genes obtained or extracted? For example, we want to get the human insulin gene out of the human, obviously. Another case is, for example, or how do we obtain the antigen gene from the hepatitis B virus? This was just the examples that I was talking about in genetic modification. So to obtain the gene from any organism, there are three ways we can actually obtain or extract the gene from the organism. So the thing I want you to understand here is, the gene is within a chromosome and the chromosomes are just these long thread-like structures inside our nucleus. Remember in the previous chapter we talked about how our body cells have 46 chromosomes and I'm just drawing out one chromosome here and the insulin gene is just a small part of that giant chromosomal structure. It's the same thing with the hepatitis B virus as well. It has a long DNA molecule and the antigen gene is just one small part of that entire long DNA molecule. So what we want is, we just want that portion, which I've highlighted. We only want that part because that's the gene of interest. That's the gene that we want to insert into another organism. So the question here is, how do we actually obtain the gene? Some of my students will immediately catch on and they will say, oh, if I just want that small part of the DNA, all we have to do is cut the DNA. And when we cut the DNA, we will get the gene that we want. So the question is, how do we cut the DNA? That's the first way we can obtain genes from an organism. We can cut the DNA using an enzyme known as the restriction endonuclease. You need to remember this type of enzyme, by the way. So what exactly is this restriction endonuclease enzyme all about? So you need to understand that, remember, it's a class of enzymes or it's just a type of enzyme that has its own active site, they reduce activation energy, and they are specific to substrates. Now, the important thing to understand about this restriction endonucleases or this restriction endonuclease enzymes uh, is the fact that they can cut the DNA at specific base sequence. In fact, that is exactly what the substrate is. Their substrates are just the specific base sequences in a DNA molecule by severing or cutting the phosphodiester bonds. This is chapter 6. Phosphodiester bond is the covalent bond that links one nucleotide to another nucleotide within the DNA strand or DNA chain. So if you don't remember that, I'm just drawing out a series of nucleotides here, DNA molecule. Remember, on one strand, I'm just drawing out one strand of the DNA molecule. And on the other strand, uh, I'm just going to put it as a red in color. And remember, both strands are anti-parallel to each other. They run in opposite directions. Complementary base pairing exists. A pairs up with T, C pairs up with G. The blue color lines, if you can see it over there, those blue color lines are referred to as the phosphodiester bond. Those are the bonds that will link the nucleotides together. That's the covalent bond that we are talking about. Now, if this diagram is a little bit complicated, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to draw out a simplified DNA molecule like this. It's just the same DNA molecule, but I've just simplified it. And the blue color lines are the phosphodiester bonds. So the image on the left and the image on the right are the same DNA molecule, except one is a little bit more complicated. The other one is simplified. I'm going to be using both when I'm talking about what the restriction endonuclease enzyme does. So you will have a comparison of the two. Now, I told you that the restriction endonuclease enzymes will cut DNA at specific base sequences. As an example, this restriction endonuclease will cut the DNA at a sequence of 
GCGCATTACGCG, that base pairing. Whenever it sees that particular sequence in the DNA, it will cut the DNA at that specific area. Some students will ask the question, why does it only cut it there? Because the active site of this enzyme is only complementary to that sequence. The second common question I will always get is, do I need to memorize the B sequences? The good news is, no, you don't have to. So that's good. But I want you to see this enzyme here. And I want you to also look at the DNA molecules that I've drawn on the left or right. They are identical. Do those B sequences exist? Yes, they do. I am highlighting them right now. You can see it over there. G, C, G, C, A, T, T, A, C, G, C, G. And you can also see it on the other side as well. It's the same identical DNA molecule. I've highlighted it. So my question is, can this enzyme cut the DNA molecule? Yes, it can cut the DNA molecule because those specific base sequences exist. So how does it actually cut the DNA molecule? As you can see over here, the enzyme is moving along the DNA molecule and once the enzyme reaches that particular base sequence, it will be like, ah, I can cut the DNA at this area. It will not cut all the phosphodiester bonds. Some of my students assume that it cuts everything. No, it doesn't. It only cuts the phosphodiester bonds which I've circled in pink over there. And when they've cut it, look at what happens to the DNA molecule. The DNA molecule becomes separated to become two fragments right now. So because why? The phosphodiester bonds have been severed or it has been removed. Now, if, you, if this diagram is a little bit confusing, let's look at the one on the right side. So what happens is the restriction endonuclease enzyme will move along the DNA molecule until it reaches that particular sequence and it will cut the phosphodiester bonds at those pink arrows. So what happens? As you can see over here, I'm just erasing the phosphodiester bonds a little bit. Okay, it has been removed. And what happens then? The DNA molecules will separate and they'll separate into two fragments right now. So just to show you, that fragment is the same as the one on the right over here, which I'm circling. And that fragment is exactly the same to that fragment, which I'm circling in orange right there. So by using the enzyme, we have cut the DNA into smaller pieces. Now you might be thinking, how does this actually remove the gene? I will talk about this part later. If you're still a little bit confused with this, let's look at another one. Now. There are many different types of restriction endonuclease enzymes. For example, the name of the enzyme at the top is called the eco R1 enzyme, and the one at the bottom is called HIND. I think it's HIND. HIND 3 restriction endonuclease. You don't need to remember the names of these enzymes. You just need to know that they are called restriction endonuclease, but they are different types. Why are they different types? Because the eco R1 will only cut the DNA at a sequence of GCATATATACG, but the HIND3 will cut the DNA at ATATGCCGTATA. So the sequences are different. They are very specific to what sequence they can cut. And the red colored dot I'm putting over there represents where they will remove the phosphodiester bonds. As an example, right now, I'm drawing out a sequence over here, as you can see, a DNA sequence. Instead of making it vertical, I'm making it horizontal, by the way. So in this case here, which of these restriction endonuclease will be able to cut the DNA? As we can see here, the eco R1 is able to cut the DNA because that specific sequence exists, G C A T A T T A T A C G. But the hind three, as it moves along the DNA molecule, it cannot find the A T A T G C C G T A T A sequence. None of those sequences exist. So the hind three is useless in this situation. So what exactly happens is, when the eco R1 goes towards the DNA molecule, it will remove the phosphodiester bonds at the parts of the arrow that I'm putting over there. And when the phosphodiester bond has been removed, let's see how it cuts it. When they've removed the phosphodiester bonds, what exactly happens? The DNA 
molecule will separate. And when they separate, by the way, they'll produce two fragments of DNA. But if you notice, there's some extra bits that are jutting out, right? For example, that TTAA sequence on the left and the AATT sequence on the right, which I've highlighted in grey, those are referred to as something known as sticky ends. And I will explain what's the importance of those sticky ends. Oh, another very important thing I want you to understand is the part of the DNA that is cut by the restriction endonuclease is referred to as the restriction site. So if I use the word restriction site, all I'm referring to is that's the area of the DNA or the part of the DNA that is cut by the restriction endonuclease. That's basically it. So with this knowledge, let's actually look at how we can use the restriction endonuclease to extract the gene from the chromosomes. As an example here, we are going to use the chromosome from the humans, which contains the insulin gene. Now, instead of drawing it in a, in a vertical form, I'm going to draw it in a horizontal orientation because it's easier for me to illustrate this. I, but it's just the same chromosome, by the way. So the same chromosome here, I'm drawing out the two chains of the DNA. Now, I'm putting in some sequences. G, C, A, T, A, T, T, A, T, A, C, G. You can see it over there. And then it's accompanied by the insulin gene. And then after that, another sequence just beyond the insulin gene, which is also G, C, A, T, A, T, T, A, T, A, C, G. Please do not memorize the sequence. This is not important. But the point here is, it's just the same DNA molecule. That part which I've highlighted is the same as this. This part which is I'm, I'm putting in red is this part. And this part is just this part like that. So it's just, I guess you can imagine it to be a magnified form of the chromosome. So remember, we only want to cut the chromosome and remove the gene. That's what we want. So in this case over here, we need to cut the chromosome at those restriction sites. So what I can do is I can use the restriction endonuclease because this restriction endonuclease, eco R1, can cut the DNA just before the insulin gene and just after the insulin gene. Okay, that's what we want. So it has those restriction sites. All right. So when it cuts it, how does it look like? Let's see how it works. So the restriction endonuclease will go over here and it will cut the phosphodiester bond at that area and also that area right there. Good. And then it will move along the DNA molecule. And as it moves along the DNA molecule, it will also cut it over there and also over that. Done. Okay. And what happens to the DNA molecule then in this case? The DNA molecule will then separate. And when it separates, we have obtained a smaller fragment, which is the insulin gene. The gene has been obtained. And the gene also has those sticky ends, which are just unpaired bases or unpaired nucleotides. So that's what we use, okay? So that's how we can use the restriction endonuclease enzyme to basically cut the chromosome at specific regions to obtain the gene. Now, a very important point that I also want to remind you is that restriction endonucleases are highly specific to the substrates or to the base sequences. What I mean by this is as follows. For example, the HIN3 restriction endonuclease will cut the DNA at ATAT, GCCGTATA. The DNA molecule on the left is normal, but the DNA molecule on the right has undergone a mutation. When it undergoes a mutation over here, CG has been replaced with AT. So why is this important? Because the HIN3 restriction endonuclease will be able to cut the DNA molecule on the left. That's fine. And when it cuts it, it will produce two separate fragments. But will it be able to cut the DNA molecule on the right? Now, some students will say, yes, it might still be able to do so. But no, the sequence has now become slightly different. Even by changing one base pair, if the sequence is different, the, the restriction site is no longer specific to this enzyme. So because it cannot fit into the active site of the enzyme, the enzyme will no longer be able to cut this particular base sequence. And therefore, the DNA will not be cut by this enzyme. 
So we have a problem over that. But long story short, what we've done so far right now is we've seen the first way that we can extract the gene from the organism. We can extract the gene from the organism by using the restriction endonuclease enzymes, which are just this class of enzymes that will cut the DNA by separating the phosphodiester bonds.